Hey there, my name is David. On this episode, I'll be doing a review of this, which is the Z-Pax Plex Solo Light. This is the world's lightest tent. I'm out here in beautiful British Columbia. Let's take a look at this. So this is a single wall trekking pole tent. It's held up by only one trekking pole, something to note most other trekking pole tents, especially Z-Pax ones, the duplex or have take two trekking poles. So this is the lightest setup you can have. It's 158 grams for the trekking pole and 343, 345 grams for the Plex Solo Lite. Now, if you're a through hiker, you might want to consider getting the other one, the, the normal Plex Solo, because it'll be a little bit more durable. It switches from a 0.75 Dyneema floor, and I believe the rest of this is 0.5, where the Plex Solo original is a 1 and 0.75, so it's a little more durable. For me, though, I'm not a through hiker. I go out in the backcountry a lot, but I'm not spending hundreds of nights every year on trail. So something to consider if you're a through hiker, which... I think a lot of through hikers are the ones looking at these ultralight options here. So this tent is held up by, as I said, one trekking pole. And to set this up, basically you set the back two corners, this one and the one back there, and you get those somewhat tension, not a lot. And then the, the main one here. With those three set, you can put the, the tent up and then you can set out all these other points to fully extend out the tent. As you can see here, I've got it completely maxed out with a different uh, array of between rocks and branches and trees and all sorts of stuff. I'm not actually in the ground for any of these tent stakes. So I do use my tent stakes sometimes. You can see just little rock, big rock. In this case, I'm using tent stake, big rock. In this one here, you can see I'm using an, a stick and a rock. So it doesn't really matter what you use, but you can get it tensioned in there. If you're camping on ground you can hammer into, it's way easier to set it up. This doesn't take that much work, but you do need to have some rocks or some trees or something to hook onto. This tent shaves some weight from the Plex Solo by uh, making these, the Z lines here are thinner. They're still durable. I haven't had any of these rip. I haven't had anything rip on the corners. I don't have any rips on the tent, period. It does have a few extra guy out points like here. And as for the front of the tent, there's no zipper on the, out, on the exterior of the tent itself. You can see it just uses this system where it comes down and hooks into this little hook. So there's two hooks on each side. It also has the tie-off points here. Now for the new Durston tents, they use a magnetic tie, which I think is just easier. You can see here, it's a little bit of a finicky to do with one hand, but it's not that bad. And you can see here, this just hooks onto that hook like that. There's no zipper up here. Now looking inside the tent, you have a full vestibule here, which you can fit a full backpack. There's also a vestibule over here. So there's a lot of space over there. You can fit your backpack inside completely if you want to and just push it against the uh, bit of the tent there. And there's, you know, space that runs all the way along as well as on the, the head of the tent. For me, I'm six foot tall and this is a normal length pad here. This is the uh, Nemo Tensor Extreme, regular length, extra wide. So this is a 25 inch wide pad, you can see, and there's still lots of space. If you're using a smaller uh, 20 or 22 inch pad, you would have even more space. There's an extra foot above the head as well. This comes with a bathtub floor and vents all the way around. My tent's sagging a little bit right now because it's it's really dewy and wet out here, but all the water runs down and goes out those vents. If you're getting water rushing underneath your tent, you can use these cinches and this pulls the bathtub floor up to provide more protection if there's water running outside. This tent has one big rainbow zipper door which goes all the way around here and it falls to the floor. I know some people don't like that but I just tuck mine in here versus having it fall out you know into the dirt. Now one downside to having a rainbow zipper door not one that zips across the bottom. You can sneak your hand underneath there and grab stuff out of your vestibule without mosquitoes coming in. With the rainbow one it's harder to you know outwit the <laughs> mosquitoes. So had pretty bad mosquitoes two nights ago last night wasn't bad so I've had kind of the full test of mosquitoes getting into this tent. If we look up to the top here, you can see the mesh goes all the way to the top, so it lets in more airflow. You also get to play whack-a-mole with mosquitoes up here. They, they get stuck on the outside, you can smush them. Uh, the top is reinforced where the trekking pole is. I haven't had any rips or tears on this, even with the thinner floor, because this is the Plex Solo Light. And as you can see here, I'm camping on some pretty uh, rough terrain here. This is basically the worst case scenario of what you'd be camping on. So last night we were camped out over there on that side 
and there was bees over there, so we moved over here. But I was camped out on grass like this, much like how my buddy has his tent over here right now, on some of this heather. You know, this stuff can be pretty rough on the bottom too, but I, I don't have any problems with my tent so far. So I've had this tent out on about a dozen trips so far, and all of them are on rough, wild camping. I don't do tent pad camping. I don't really hike on trails all that much. I typically do backcountry hiking and, and camping, so I'm always looking for spots to camp like these wild places here. The only place I can see this tent having real troubles setting it up is if you're on top of a big rock slab and it's smooth and polished. Maybe something that was polished by a glacier and then washed off or somewhere where water used to run and there's no loose rocks, there's no crevices and there's no foliage, there's no branches or trees. Then you might struggle because you have to have basically those three points of tension, the two back corners and the front. And then other places you want to then tie off the other two corners. You basically have to have at least uh, five, 10 stakes to set up this tent and there's 11, I believe they have 11 points total that you can tie off and get more space out of the tent, but you need five. So for 10 stakes, I use MSR groundhogs, the big ones on the back two corners and on the front. And then I use mini groundhogs on the other two corners, but I'm actually testing out some other ones too. This is a Z-Pax one down here. I also have a Sea to Summit one that I'm testing out that I really like because it's got a handle on it and it's easier to pull out. But the MSR ones are just known as being the most durable. But you don't need big groundhogs on all the way around. Really just the, the three points. And then the rest can be smaller ones. So once you get the tent set up, then you want to go around. There's tension points here and you can easily just pull on these to tighten them. Like that. And then creates more tension and it creates more room inside the tent. So it's pretty easy to set up once you figure it out. So the main thing to note about this tent or any trekking pole tent is it's a bit of a struggle to set up at first, but once you get it, it's really easy to set these up. They're a lot lighter. In this case, this is the lightest tent setup period in the world, unless you're going with like a really basic tarp. If you get this tent, which I'll link up down below, as well as the stakes I use, the MSR Groundhogs, the minis and the big ones, you want to set it up in a grassy field and you don't want to get it super tight when you set it up. You want it just, just barely pulling it so it's starting to get tension because when you put the pole up, it tightens everything. So that's the, the basic uh, Cole's notes of how to set this thing up. I'd say though, if you, if you get this tent and you're a little bit frustrated at first, just set it up a few times and you eventually you'll get it. And especially when you start getting with rocks and stuff, it's really easy to set this up. So here's a look inside the tent. So here's an example of condensation on this tent. A little bit wet, but it's not too bad. Do you have the vents down here where the condensation can run if need be? If it got a lot, but you can just see here it's a little bit more up here. Yeah, you can see a couple of little streaks. All right, so we can see the backlit condensation. We've got a Swedish cloth, it's all black. This thing is basically like I don't know what is it 15 20 times more absorbent or something than a paper towel. Wipe off your tent. It really just soaks it up. One pass is all you need to do. So that's what it's like to dry off a tent on the inside with a Swedish cloth. So here we are, the Plex Solo Classic and the Plex Solo Lite, side by side. They look identical, but the only thing you can really notice is the Z lines. The lines here are thicker on the, the Classic versus the Z Lite. And the top material is thinner, and so is the bottom material, a little bit thinner. That's my review of the Z-Pax Plex Solo Lite. This is my favorite tent. This is the only tent I use now because all other tents I have just, they just weigh a lot more. And when I'm out in the backcountry here, I want as light as possible. So if you guys want to check it out, I'll link it up in the description down below, as well as the MSR Groundhog Stakes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.